Welcome back to another episode of Puff Puff Podcast, where we talk movies, games, and wrestling. It's Pride Month, happy Pride, and Shannon, pass that shit up and light it up, and let's get into this. So it's been a while since we did another podcast. We had a bit of a dilemma with technical hardware and shipping from the United States. Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> a, this podcast is now going to trash a specific company. Well, I mean, to be fair, that said they company, were very nice. They yes. they rectified their um, problem as quickly as as quickly. Well, I shouldn't say quickly, but they rectified it. Yeah, it took some budging, but I assume that with every company, not every company is going to give you no absolutely your money back. <laughs> No, they're going to fight you for it, tooth and nail. Um, yeah, so we're going to talk about a Netflix show that just came out recently, Love, Death, and Robots. And for those who don't know, Love, Death, and Robots is a Netflix original that basically features one of the three titles, Death, Love, or Robots. And it's an anthology series similar to Black Mirror using a bunch of different styles of animation. It is a great choice for people who just want to sit down and watch something a little different. It's essentially a short film collage. It's a film festival at home. Yeah. That's it, really what it is. Good way to put that. Um, so, Shannon, we both watch Death, Love, or Love, Death, and Robots together. Um, what are your thoughts, you know, on the whole series in general? Like, I know we haven't watched the first season in a long time. Well, I feel like I do remember enough from the first season. Like, it's that... It's impactful enough that I do remember, like, the uh, a fair amount of the episodes, or at least the concept mm. of a majority of the episodes. But for this season, I feel like it wasn't, it was not nearly as good as the other, the first season. Well, a comment you made, and I have to agree with, as much as I did enjoy um, the second season, a lot of the episodes felt very similar in tone or very similar in like what theme. was actually happening like yeah. the the i so the first thing that i noticed is that most of the animation style was like realistic humans so yeah. like a video game or something like that um there wasn't a lot of cartoon i don't even know if there was a 2d one i think there was one 2d one if i don't if i remember correctly uh, i mean the episode and just to forewarn everybody, we will be going into spoiler territory yeah. because you can't talk about an eight-minute thing without spoiling it. <laughs> yeah. Um, what about the episode with um, the the Ice Walkers? That's what I call it. I can't remember what the oh, title yes. is called. I think that is the, the like one episode that's 2D or whatever. But you know what? I think they actually used 3D, but, <coughs> but made it... <coughs> sorry. But made it look... 2D, because yeah. that is an, of what they usually do nowadays yeah. anyways, because it's the easiest and it saves uh, time and money. Definitely. Um, just while we're on the topic of that episode, what did you think? Because I really found that episode enjoyable. Yeah, I don't. you were like fucking fascinated. You like turned to me, you're like, oh, what do you think the whales represent? <laughs> like, I don't know, you're like, what do you think about this episode? I'm like, oh, I don't, I didn't think that much of it, honestly. Uh, just for people, just to give a little background, this episode focuses on a two brothers. One is cybernetically altered, and the other one isn't. And the one who isn't, we follow his character, and him. He meets up with his brother and their friends, and they run across like um, an ice, an ice, like an ice, uh, like a ice pond, an ice river, an ice ocean. Oh my God, we're Canadian. Why do we not know this? I don't know. Like <laughs> they run over, they run over like ice. They run over ice and. <laughs> They have to make it to the other end of the, like, the river, or... Ocean. Yeah, the ocean. Yeah, it would be an ocean. Yeah, of the ocean, while, uh, before seven, like... Whales like, come hit. through the ice. Yeah. Yeah, so basically, they put these flares up, and they run across it, and... These, they have seven times before yeah. the whale breaks through and kills so them. So these mutant people who can run super fast and everything are running across it, and for some reason, I never understood this part, the human guy... Um, decides to join them, even though he can't run nearly as fast as them. I always took that as him having something to prove. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and that's, I think, something, too, that young men always face, because they're always trying to prove their masculinity, yeah. because it's always under question. Yeah. Especially, and I think that goes along with his line, where he, this is, like, the only line that I remember, where he was, like, Back where we were from, um, you were the only one, and now I'm the only one. Mm. Like, who's a human up here because they're in, like, the Arctic or whatever yeah. city. Um, 
the, a really good story. What did you think of when the brother, like, at the end of the story, the the older, or the, sorry, the younger brother hurt his knee and the older brother had to save him. Yeah. And then at the end, he jumps off of that knee. What did you interpret that as? Well, like... Because they don't go into well, it. I see the first time I watched it, I didn't actually see that part because I was like, I was like half looking away or whatever. Yeah. Um. So then we rewatched it and I noticed that, and like I feel like we already had the discussion by the time that I noticed it. So it was basically like he. I feel like to me he's kind of like, first of all, I don't want I want to make sure my brother isn't gonna die, <laughs> so I'm gonna have an excuse to come back to make sure that he is at the same spot because if he's gonna die i'm gonna die with him kind of thing like you know what i mean oh that's interesting i took it differently yeah especially since the whale was almost basically there killing him anyways um but i feel like you could go deeper on that for like a more of emotional reasoning i personally think for me that he he, uh, the brother who had the leg injury faked it to give his brother that, um, not belief in himself, but that, um, assurance. Like he assured, like in a way it's like he basically put his brother to the test. You know what I mean? Uh, so when he jumped off and they just look and there's, they just look and they don't say anything. That's how I took it as like his brother was like, I could have saved myself, but you saved me. You know what I mean? Like either that or... He healed very quick because he's a cyborg. No, he. I don't think that. No, because what it is. he looked back and he smirked at him. The uh, his brother smirked at him too. So they acknowledged. Yeah. That he was faking it. Yeah, he's he he just said you proved it to yourself right there. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you don't need this to show what you have. Mm-hmm. I really I really liked the visual of that episode. I remember you saying you weren't the biggest fan of the visual. Yeah, I just style. I don't like um. Like it, it has its. A little bit of a charm, but me personally, just my taste, I, I hate um, stop motion, and I hate kind of like that thick lined, hard cut kind of animation style. Like, you know how around their face they had really thick black lines? There's this, um, I think there was a, um, a kid's show kind of like that too, but there's an adult TV show. That oh, oh, it was called the Nut Shack, I think. It, it was sort of similar, if I'm remembering it correctly, because I think there's another adult show that's sort of like that. Okay. That has this style, but yeah, I just don't like it. I don't like thick lines. I honestly, at first when I started watching, I didn't enjoy it, but I love seeing the the ice breaking machines and then the whales yeah. jumping out and then even their jumping, their silhouette. I was yes. like, I thought that would looked really good. The way they moved. I like the backgrounds more than I did. The people that they drew. I, you know, that's yeah. fair. It gave me a very Blade Runner vibe. Yeah, like a cold Blade Runner. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like that type of world. Um, and th- you don't see a lot of, um, like, Arctic or cold and kind of, like, futuristic. No. Yeah. To me, I really... And it was a city, too. It was, yeah. yeah which was you like really a- don't see in the Arctic. No, 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 no. Um, that's one motif I really enjoy in movies that I wish I could, you know, have a budget enough to put snow in movies, you know what I mean? Because it's, to me, it gives us such a feeling. Like, Mm -hmm. when I see snow, like... Christmas? Not necessarily Christmas. I get a very... Yeah, that could be one, but, like, snow can also be, like, cold and lonely and Mm -hmm. desperate. Like, um, Snowpiercer, I guess. I don't know how much of that... Was that... I've never seen this movie, but everyone says it's good, apparently, and they even made a TV show out of it, so... Oh, that's the one on the the train. Yes. Okay, yeah, I've been hearing... I've heard about the movie, and I've heard about the show. I've heard they're good. Yeah. We'll have to check that out sometime. Um, But yeah, back to Snow in um, just movies right quick. I really feel like different things, like Home Alone, you think snow, when it snows at the end, it's warm, and it's loving, and it's family... But then you have the snow in the thing, and it just kind of makes it more <laughs> more desolate, more scary, more alone. It's a desert. It's basically yeah. a desert with snow. Well, yeah, the Arctic is technically a desert. Yeah, you just when you say desert, most people think sand. Oh, there's our cat. Yeah, she's here. You want this? Oh. Um, other episodes I feel like were really good this season. I can't, And I'm sorry that I don't remember the names of this. But the one with the cop who oh, has yeah. to kill the children. 
Yeah, that yeah. was very much like a video game animated. I like that. I did. He too. reminds me of somebody, but I don't know who. And the girl, <laughs> wait, the girl, his girlfriend is definitely the human version of Angelina Jolie, the fish in Shark Tale. <laughs> No, I don't see that. I don't know where you're yes. getting that from. Oh my god, 100%. Oh. Do you know who I'm talking about now? I was thinking you were talking about the pink fish that ends up being his girlfriend. Angelina Jolie, she plays the hot devil fish, doesn't yes. she? Yes. Like the one with the yes. big lips. Yes. I can see that more now. Yes. I still don't agree, but I thought you were talking about the pink one. I was like, what are you on about? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, no. She definitely looks like the, the evil bitch one. Yeah, I don't see that, but I, I can see a similarity. Please let us know <laughs> that I am right. You are not right. Please. Tell me I am wrong. Please. Convince me. Change my mind. That episode, though, had some real, like, um, some weight to it. Because right <laughs> off the bat, within the first minute, he, he, he guns down a kid. Yeah, who kills a baby? Yeah, literally. <laughs> like, from like, who kills a baby? <laughs> Oh, just going back to who he reminds me of, he looks like, to me, the actor who played Roose Bolton in Game of Thrones, but who he is in Wonder Woman. He's the guy at the beginning. Or it's either Wonder Woman or Justice League. He's uh, wearing, like, a fedora hat, and he goes to rob the bank, and she's like, I'm here, near, near. I think it's Justice yeah, League. Yeah, that has to be. Yes, it is Justice League, because we had to watch it again when we watched <laughs> Zack We had to watch it again. Was it Zack Snyder? Yes. Yeah, there's the Justice League, as the internet's calling it, oh and then the that Snyder <laughs> That League annoys cut. me so much. I think, honestly, both versions are... Crap! Crap, exactly. People are just giving... I, I think people are giving Snyder a easier time, because his movie was more interesting but barely yeah i here's the problem that i have with that it's kind of like captain hindsight you know what i mean oh yeah like you edit the movie you fix the movie based on the critiques that you had already of your scenes that you put out there or whatever or just in general or how you could do it different and i know Zack snyder did have a vision in mind but you can't tell me that his mind didn't change over the course of oh, x amount definitely. of years to make a better product than what like you had or whatever you know what i mean Who like wouldn't? i'm not here to sh completely shit on him but i feel like it, people are very unjust <laughs> you're so proud of yourself for that aren't you <laughs> okay I don't know. Like it's it's not a good movie. It's just it's an epic. It's an it's epic an, of a bunch of stuff that just happens. Like there are so many scenes that are like, why why is that here? First yeah. of all, the CGI horses fucking look like shit. I cannot. I can't get over it. Um, and then being the horse person that you are, that's where you take most issue with. <laughs> but like Stefan Wolf is like probably ninety percent better, honestly. But again, he's still not memorable. At least I didn't think. I, remember, I keep hearing the. People... I remember his suit more. No, I think it was cool. The, the, what, I'm, what I'm talking about more is the character and the motivations. Because yes. people are saying they fixed him so well and he left such an impression. To me, they gave him a reason more than I wanted to destroy the yes. world. But I didn't care. It didn't make me empathize with him. It yeah. didn't make me. Because they didn't go. They just mentioned it offhand. And they don't really div go with it mm -hmm. the reason why i understand thanos i don't agree with him but i understand him is because i know what he's thinking he yes. has his reasons they go deeper in it and even just the way that he talks about things and i know thanos is i don't well you know what i don't fucking know who actually reads the thanos comics let's fucking come on anyways i don't I mean, know i don't know anybody i don't know if thanos has his own line I mean, no maybe. i mean the ones like that the he Gauntlet. is in oh yeah um but like, they they made Thanos more human, but Stefan Wolf still kind of talked like a creature. He talked like an ancient god. Yeah, so you know it's kind of I mean? like, how am I supposed to, like, understand? I don't know. I don't I think you can do that with a character that speaks like that. I mean, even Thor, they made people relate to him. Yeah. But well, like, he was also really hot. <laughs> you know, I didn't relate to Chris Hemsworth because he's really hot. You want to know why? Because I'm not really hot, surprisingly. <laughs> surprise, surprise. I don't have the God of Thunder body. I have the God of Doritos body. Oh, uh, nice. They should put that one in the film. <laughs> Thank you. You're Don welcome. Cheadle could say it, because War Machine always, his jokes always tank, in my opinion. I don't know. That's uh, not Captain America's. Yeah, I don't know about his jokes. Oh, because every time he says something, to me, I find, 
I don't know. Like, he's the guy when Star-Lord is, they're going back in time and he's dancing, and then it cuts to him and goes, so he's an idiot. Oh, that was funny. Yeah, shut up. Yeah, because now I'm laughing at it, too. Like, that is funny. <laughs> okay, I take it back. Okay. Anyway, so the Justice League, they have bad horses. Um, the guy was, like, a bit better or whatever. And, oh, yes. So this scene, this scene left an impression, impression because I was like, why? So it was at the, literally the very beginning of the movie. And um, Alchemans in Norway? I don't know. Mm. Um, and then they do their little talk and whatever. And then the I think in the original movie, it just kind of ended with him like um, being like, bye, Batman or whatever. But this time they like, they held on to this one fucking shot basically of him like going into the water and then these girls fucking sing for like a solid I remember three that. fucking yeah. minutes. And I'm like, well, Zach, why did you add that? What did that add? Did you, was it just to tell us that they appreciated him as like a god of their town or something? Because mm. It doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. I I feel... I know we were talking about Death Love Robots, but now we got into this. They lead <laughs> to each other sometimes. The Justice League is failed potential. Yes. It To me, I think DC... And I've said this before. DC fucked up by not taking their time to build these mm-hmm. characters. You don't have to give every character their own movie before you do it. You just have to give the important ones a bit of a story, a bit of a rub. You can put the Flash in a Superman movie. Yeah. You can put Aquaman in the Wonder Woman movie. You know what I mean? But there are certain characters that I think you need to focus on. Mm-hmm. And then we went into this movie really only knowing, was it Superman and Batman? Was Diana, did she have... She was at the very end of Batman versus Superman, but we didn't really know anything about her character. But was Wonder Woman come out before Justice League? I'm going to look that up because that's <laughs> what I want to know. Because, I mean, they Diana does, does... She does have a character. I just find it's very... And I don't know if this is necessarily the character or if it's the performance. Because I find the performance from Gal Gadot to be me, in my opinion, very just weak. Yeah, I don't know how, like, she actually acts. You know what? No, I've seen her in, like, two animated movies, I think. And she's definitely a lot more talkative. And I would say she's more of an extrovert than Gal Gadot plays her. And I think I think it is a bit of them telling her how to act and her kind of doing her own interpretation and trying to be like a strong woman or whatever. Yeah. In the same way that Brie Larson does it, and it fucking pisses me off. Well, I think to me she falls flat personally. Yeah, oh, but like just to answer your question, Wonder Woman came out in May of twenty seventeen. The Justice League came out in the twenty seventeen. Oh, okay, so yes. Justice League came first? No, Justice League oh. came after. Oh, sorry. Okay. But by only a few months. So okay. By that point, yeah, the movie did come out, mm. but by the time they were making it, they're like, we don't know what her character is going to be because we haven't seen the finished movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, that, that's just speculation here, but. I could see that. I, that's exactly what I could see. <laughs> but. Um... I do have to say, though, give credit. Wonder Woman has a badass theme that doesn't, f- that I feel doesn't fit her. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I think her theme should be a little bit more epic. To me, her theme gives me a James Bond vibe. Like a, more like a, like a car chase. Yeah. You know what like, I mean? She has car chases, but like, I don't know. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from, though. And I feel like, but yeah, it's really awesome, but... Maybe, I don't think it if, suits if it her. Was, if it was a different version of a different Wonder Woman. Mm. See, to me, it's like, I could... I don't know. I just, for me, I think Wonder Woman and, like... Her character, for me, I think they did really well in the animated Justice League show. They kind of gave her... No, she's not always the most um, fiery character. Mm-hmm. But you don't always need that. No. I don't know. I just... I don't prefer her performance. Which, you know... Yeah, especially if it's like... I hate... <laughs> I fucking hate this shit. It's like these fucking companies are patting themselves on the back because they're like... Look, we got our our first female superhero or whatever, mm. and then they're both played like not human. <laughs> I get what you're saying. Where the yeah, exactly what you're saying is like they're getting a free pass to make a subpar movie. Yes, 
And I find that with both Wonder Woman, I found was boring. I found I didn't give a damn about Captain Marvel. Like no. they both were just meh to me. Wonder Woman made me mad, but Marvel just made me sad. <laughs> <laughs> and I think to me, the perception I have of Captain Marvel was tainted by the my perception of Brie Larson. Yes. Because to me, she does not leave a positive impression. And I'm not one for like judging celebrities, but I'm going to in this case, I guess. Uh, she gives me just very insecure vibes. Very, I don't know, unlikable for me. Yeah, it's almost like um, toxic masculinity, but toxic, toxic femininity. I see where you could definitely come up with that, yeah, because it's almost... I was watching... I have you to prove myself or yeah, something. Yeah, it's, it's obnoxious, yeah. in a way. Um, there was a great video talking about like that exact phrase, toxic femininity. I was like, this sounds interesting, or neckbeardy. I wonder yes. which it is, you know <laughs> what I mean? But she was talking about it, and she had a great quote that described kind of how she felt about how companies are using femininity, like in, um, what was it, Captain Marvel's case and Brie Larson's case, she said, why do men need to bow down for you to step up? Yeah. And that, I think, quote, kind of talks about a sentiment that some people feel in the guy side, but also some women do mm. on the female side. You know what I mean? Yeah. W it's like one party has the rule supreme. Yeah, in a way. Yeah. And... I, I, both of them are wrong, obviously, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? If we can't work together, then what the fuck? Happy Pride as well. <laughs> I've said that a few times. <laughs> Where'd that come from? Because we're a company, we're going to shill out all the Pride stuff to sound like we care, because... <laughs> oh, every 20, every 20 fucking minutes we have to read the Pride ad. <laughs> yeah, that, that, like, companies this time of year, I, I, for me, I just feel like it's so disingenuine. I actually saw a post, and I don't know if it's verified to be real or not, but it was, oh, what was it? Oh, it was a, I think it was a, I think it might have been like Bethesda or a game company. Yeah. Right? And they had a bunch of their, like Bethesda UK, Bethesda New Zealand, blah, blah, blah. There was like four or five different accounts, all sporting the pride flag, and then it was, and, you know, I'm not reading this verbatim. I'm a little baked right now. So, but it was <laughs> it like Bethesda. It could have possibly. It I, was accusedly. <laughs> well, it was, I can't remember what the exact country is, but it was something like um, Bethesda Israel or something yeah. like that. You know what I mean? And it was black. And it was the Mr. Krabs meme. Why did you put all of your uh, company's thing except for in these, uh, you know, Middle Eastern countries? Because we like money. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, to me, it was so, like... I can understand... I totally understand why they did it. But it's kind of like, if you're going to step up and make a point... That's to, the thing. Yeah. You're, you're basically playing both sides of the fence yes. right here. If you're going to, in my opinion, if you're going to make a statement... Make that statement. Mm -hmm. Don't back. It's all across the board. It's exactly. not just for special people. Exactly. If if you if you don't want to do it, nobody's forcing you to. But don't fucking pat yourself on the back here yeah. while you're still doing that. Yeah. That's my opinion, though. I'm gonna find that thing and show you, though. You'll get a kick out of it. Oh, the meme. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I just want to circle back to Death, Love, and Robots. <laughs> and it comes oh, right. Yeah. Around you know how we how we do it. Um. Was there any other episodes that really stuck out to you this season? Because I can't... Oh! What about the guy on the train? I don't remember... I don't really care for the story as much. The guy who goes into the cornfield. Oh, There's see, a bunch of monsters. to me, I'm like, oh, that's that Stephen King movie we watched. Yeah, that's what I was thinking it was <laughs> going to be. Ghost. But it's literally... It's literally just oh. a Stephen King movie with ghosts. But you know what? It looked cool. I really liked the design of it because it reminded me of a tell tale game. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like the animation. I like the character and the colors and everything. It was... It was I like a short animations that look like you're almost watching a live painting. Those are cute. Yeah. I thought yeah. I really enjoyed that. Um, I, it was Bethesda. I was. Yeah. Um, was it Israel? Uh, I just closed my phone. God damn it. It was Bethesda <laughs> and Bethesda Middle East. Oh. So this this definitely could be a fake just being Middle East. Oh. I mean, I don't know if a company would be, that would identify as like, I guess you, would a company be like Bethesda North America? Yeah. I guess, so it could be. Yeah. Um, 
Interesting. It, yeah. Anyways, we don't want to get into this. De- love, no, death, and robots. No, 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 no. That's a whole different thing that uh, smarter people than us have tried to figure out. Um, yeah, this season I was disappointed, though, that there were only eight episodes. Because last season yeah. was like 20. It was like, what the fuck will happen? Guys, can you not just buy somebody else's anima- like old animations from 2016 or something mm. and just fill up your slots? Like... I was disappointed that there was no real comedic ones that I remember. Like, in terms... There was the first one with the yeah. robot, but I was thinking, like, the absurd one last season where yogurt the milk. took... Oh my god, yeah. That was just so bizarre. I was like, okay, I'm along for the ride. Or the one with the um, the three robots visiting, like, destruction yeah. of Earth. That was fun. That was cute, yeah. I like that one. Yeah, there's no one that was like, ooh. Or, like, I don't know. Yeah, the one... I keep wanting to say it's Jamie Foxx, but I don't think it's Jamie Foxx. One in the spacesuit? Yeah. It's Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan. I Okay, I don't know why I get them confused. It's because you're a racist, man. <laughs> Just, <laughs> no. I literally, because I don't know what they look like. It's like, um, okay, I also get Brad Pitt and Tom Hanks confused no, all the Tom time. No, Tom Cruise. No, Tom Cruise. Yes, sorry, Tom Cruise. And again, she's fucking crazy. Those two look nothing alike. They are the fucking same person to me. They are the, they look the same. They are the same. They're both big American movie actors. <laughs> They're big both. <laughs> That's just you not learning who's who. The, so, it's not racism. It's just stupidity. <laughs> well, I was going to say, it's not racism for you because you're white. <laughs> it doesn't work in that no. way. Um... um Yes, so the one with uh, Michael B. Jordan. I only remember seeing him at the beginning and being like, is that Michael B. Jordan? And me being like, no, I'm probably just racist. And then I had to look it up and it was Michael B. Jordan. I didn't really... I was like, I'm not racist. That to me, one, that one left such a little impression <laughs> yeah, on me. Yeah, I don't remember anything else from it. I know he was in the spaceship, that's it. Well, it's like he was trying to like survive. It was supposed to be like a like a... Like a thriller, like a horror movie in a way. Yeah, like an alien, but no. Yeah, it just didn't, exactly. It didn't hit the quite... It was like, eh. Yeah, exactly. It was Al. Al? Al. Al alien. instead of AI, Al. No, oh, uh, I get it. Yeah. It was, it was just, it was partly alien. It tried. It tried. Um, yeah, it's it's been a real, like, mixed bag, honestly. I feel like this season has some good standouts, but all in all, weaker season. But yet again, you had very little, you had way less. There yeah. were ones in the first season I really enjoyed, like, um... I like the, the first one. I know you didn't as much. Um, the one with the robots? The lesbians. The lesbian... That's what you remember right <laughs> off the bat. <laughs> the lesbian right monster. Month. Yeah, exactly. Keep it on the theme. Here's <laughs> here's our 20-minute intersection again. Um, I personally really like the, um... The fox lady that... Oops! Start a fire! Oh, the fox... Lady... That turned, um, like, half a robot or whatever. Was that the one that's kind of like a Japanese yeah, in a setting like in Japan a, yeah. or ancient, you know? I think it's, I think it was Japan, actually. Yeah, it was Japan or China. We're not, I'm not 100% sure. It's been years since yeah. I saw that. Um, I do remember that style, though, and it being very yes. visually appealing. There was the robot one, the yogurt one, um, the cornfield one. Was where that oh, was, was that them in the super mech suits? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't like that one. That, that one's one too went, long. Yeah, it yeah. was too long, and it's the same to me, the same beat the entire time. Mm-hmm. It's just one big battle. Mm-hmm. The the vampire one. There's one. I forgot about that one. Yeah, there's one. I think that's also two D type of anime style, and I remember them being in cars or do like you, a robot-y thing. Do you remember the one with the? Um, woman who's running from the guy and it's almost like a live action but with animation yes. over it. that was that, visually i love that i think that's the one that everyone just agrees that that's like the top notch one like that's everyone's favorite basically it was really good yeah that it, one's really i good. at first i was like is this live action or what is yeah it, it took me a while to figure out what it was mm-hmm. um i really love this one i find people don't really talk about this one as much from what i've seen online is the, I can't remember what it's called, but it's where the two, where the guy is a werewolf in the uh, oh, US military. Army. Oh, yeah, military. Yeah. Where they fight with each other. I'm like, that's a unique twist to put on, like a military movie. What would they do with these literal dogs of war now? Yeah. And I just really like the concept and being able to play out that. I think that that could be an interesting idea, but I feel like the problem, I guess, where I could see if I was going to make this the I don't know why the Iraq War. It's like it doesn't really suit well for a werewolf. Yeah, I was just kind of like, this is a weird tone. Yeah, 
You know what I mean? You have those two things. It's almost I feel like, like Vietnam would have been better because it's in the jungle. Yeah. And you could like hide and be like, oh my god, what is that? And then it's like, bah! It could be like a Predator type movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, but it's really the enemy troops. Let's, let's make it. We're going to make mm-hmm. Predator without the Predator. We're going to call it Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> Translates to Predator in Old Latin. Jesus Christ. Oh, that's horrible. Um, I'm going to hell. So, and there was a, like a Russian zombie one, or I think. I like that one because I like the concept that he's like guys going on this secret mission, you know what I mean, to end World War II to make sure the Nazis don't like have this zombie. That I like because Nazis and zombies and all those like heinous, like demonic shit, it's kind of embroiled with the fictional side of like, especially in comics like Hellboy, you know, the Nazis were trying to summon the old gods. You know, from beyond the planes of existence, all that shit. So, I, I I let that one pass, even though I gave shit to the werewolf one about not fitting in, but, you know, yeah. preference, preference. It's my show. I'm trying to think. I think there was a couple other ones that were missing. Oh, probably. Yeah. But... Oh, the spider web lady in space, where he's, like, living out, having sex with his ex. I just remember, I just remember the ending of that. I don't remember anything yeah. else. I just remember the... Fucking Dark Souls looking spider yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, he's like, ah, as you yeah. zoom out. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking creepy. Um, we're going to segue now into the gaming section of the podcast. Um, now, Shannon, I you've been watching me play Mass Effect mm-hmm. for the past couple of days. I, have, I owned the trilogy for years, but I never got into them. And then I was like, you know what? Everybody tells me it's such a good story. I'm going to power through it. But I know I didn't want to play the game and have to keep retrying and retrying because I because I suck at games to begin with. But also the first Mass Effect, its gameplay for like its shooting and its covering, is dog mm-hmm. shit. Honestly, I'm if that did not have the RPG system, it would never have gotten a sequel. Oh, I, I think that if it was Assassin's Creed, the first one, I have no idea how they got the. the I sequel. think it was just I think it was just a cool concept that they were like, yes, we can just branch this out into more things. That first game fucking sucked, especially for the year that it was released. Yeah. You've never seen their fucking faces. Well, it's not even that. All the missions were the same. You follow a guy, sit on a bench, yes. listen to him. It was literally exactly You got to kill like one person. Oh my god. The second one revitalized that franchise. Yeah. But looping back to Mass Effect here, I am started the second one and it's already tenfold better than the first one. Mm-hmm. My friend was asking me if I romanced any of the characters in the first game. I didn't know you could do that because it didn't take time to explore because I hated the gameplay that fucking much. Oh no. But what made it easier, and I don't want to just say like I'm shitting on the first Mass Effect. I enjoyed it. I thought it had epic moments. What made it easy for me is I set the game to easy and I've never done that. And I kind of felt like the game in me was like, you're, you know, you fucking weakling, you yeah. know, can't handle it. Cheat. But, then I, but then I was like, I want to enjoy the story. I want to <laughs> have fun. Yeah. I don't want to not enjoy this game. Yeah. Well, they have a lot of video games now. They just have like a story mode where it's basically no gameplay and you just enjoy the story. I don't want to do that. Yeah. But I do think I'm going to start giving more games a second try mm-hmm. if... They have an easy mode where I'm like, okay, this might be a little bit more enjoyable there. Like Dark Souls? Dark Souls and those type of games, I don't think they have modes. I <laughs> They're think like it's just... all in or nothing, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I want to go on. I find there's a lot. There's that section of people that are diehard Dark Souls fans and the Souls Born, all that shit. I enjoy those games for, you know, like I like the concept more than I like actually playing them because I play the same level Mm -hmm. over Mm -hmm. and over. Mm -hmm. And that's the appeal for some people. I don't get it personally. Yeah, you don't like grinding. No, exactly. I hate grinding in a video game. Video games are supposed to be fun. (laughs) If I want to grind, I'll go work out. You know what I mean? Like, I'll do that. I will only grind in like Final Fantasy or like Kingdom Hearts or like Pokemon, something like that. Anything else, no. I don't grind in any games. Also, one thing, I never, for the life of me, as tight as I am with money in real life, I'm even tighter in video games. Oh I my don't even gosh. bother to learn the goddamn market system. I'm just like, I need this. I'm going to take this. Oh, I can use it for later. Don't need it now. I'm going to come back later. I don't learn the marketing. I never, if I'm playing like a Witcher game or even Skyrim. Oh, I think there's thunder outside. Ooh, thunder. Feel the thunder. <laughs> um... I never learn their magic system or their alchemy system. I'm just not interested. I am much more of a stealth-based 
charming player. Are you stealthy, though? I don't feel like I've seen you be stealthy in your video games very I'm much. I'm not stealthy in Fallout because it's stupid as much, oh. you know, to me, because it's like you're always sneaking around in a building in a goddamn metal armor suit. Mm-hmm. But in Skyrim, I love sneaking around with people, you know what I mean? Like, slitting someone's throat in the night in the night is way better than, like, oh, I will challenge you. It's like, no, no, I want to kill you at your wedding, <laughs> not on the battlefield. <laughs> Oh my I hope my neighbors don't hear this because they don't know. They, yeah, they just literally just hear so me. So I murdered. Say that. So what happened to my last neighbor? No. Um, but going back to Mass Effect, it really is a fun sci-fi game. You know what I mean? To mm-hmm. me, and it's not too. I'm gonna border on it's not too geeky for my taste. It's not yes. too nerdy for my taste. Like I, I'll be honest with you guys. I'm a basic white dude. You know what I mean? Except I don't like IPAs. So I, I'm going to like, I want just like, just give me like a game that I'm familiar with, with a, a skin like that on it and make it work. So yeah, I don't know. Like people say Skyrim is so basic, but I find the ones that get more complicated into the stats and like having to mismanage everything. I'm like, that takes away from the fun with me. That makes it almost like me trying to chart, you know, like yeah. in the stars. Do you think you're going to do more of that now with the second one? Because you think you'll enjoy the second one more? Do you want to make it last? Well, I want to experience it more. So I'm going to be doing a lot more exploring. Like, I completely forgot the, about your uh, crewmate's abilities. So I've been... Oh, I yeah. was in the game the entire time being like, why am I leveling this stuff up? I can't control it. I was an idiot and forgot about it. Oh, I felt so stupid playing the, mm. the thing there. That... Yeah, that so, really was who, who are you aiming to romance? Uh, I'm going to try to... Romance everything. Everyone. Yeah. You're, they're gonna find. Oh my God! Her cat just crashed. No, she didn't. <laughs> she was space planted. Um. Did you? Oh, did you follow? Like you know, Sky Skypunk, Cyberpunk. Yeah. Has a lot of romance options. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, it, I never knew too much about Cyberpunk. Well, honestly. I think all I really knew about because I didn't want to look up anything. Yeah. Was how buggy it was. Yes, and still. Yeah, I remember when I said I never wanted the chatty one. <laughs> this was the exact me. scenario, though I was picturing. Listen, she's just our added star guest. I see. Do you not want to hear my child scream in the background? Oh, uh, ask that question in a restaurant. See how many people <laughs> say yes. They do want to hear it. Can bring her in a restaurant? No. <laughs> well, people might pet her. People might like her. Um, but yeah, Mass Effect to me is really starting to interest me. I don't know who I'm going to romance. I'm going to try to wine and dine as many people, robots, things, you know, if, if it's got a hole, I'm going to fuck it in that <laughs> game. That's what I'm going to do. Oh uh, my God. Uh, that's, that's horrible. Um, what have you been playing? Have you been playing? I feel like you've kind of dropped off the game scene for a little while. Yes. <laughs> oh, she said no. Yeah. Um, I feel like I, what was, Hello. What was the last... I had um, one video game that I finished. I feel like I got it for Christmas, maybe? Because I felt like it was January was when I stopped kind of playing video games. Was it a game that we were both playing? I have no idea. Yeah, I don't even remember what the last one was. Um, we have been playing Overcooked lately, though. Yes, I love Overcooked so much. It is very fun. Talking to the mic, though, your thing's not picking up that way. Oh, sorry. That's all right. But no, Overcooked is, like, I actually love games that allow you to just play with the next person next to you. Mm-hmm. Because, and this is so old man, we're never going to go back. They, they want you to buy another console, another online subscription, another controller, another copy of the game. It's communism, baby. What? Wait, capitalism, sorry. That's the exact opposite. <laughs> Insert the communism theme song, basically. Do you mean the Rush, yeah. USSR national yeah. anthem? The let's communist be, theme song. Let's be honest, that's what it is. The internet knows it as that. Ah, the internet's the judge of all. Capitalism is what I meant. Um, w- w- do you think uh, games like more games like Overcook, I think, need to be put to the forefront? Because I never heard of it. If it wasn't for girlfriend reviews, I would never have heard of that. Game. I know, like, and like, there are so rare games that you can actually just sit down beside each other now like there's mario kart and like the parties and everything but that's basically that game that we bought on the, the gun on the playstation oh. we plays i can't remember what it's called now um it's... the bad one or jack jack uh no the the one with the competition every week you dress up your weird little character and you jump through hoops i can't remember what it's called now off the top man, fall guys yes fall yes. guys yeah that was that was great and it that's was online simple. though so 
But I'm talking about just like a simple game that you can just bouncing off your point. A game that you can just sit down. You don't have to mm. invest anything. You can just sit down and play yes. a couple of games. Yeah. That's what Call of Duty used to be for me like during this whole pandemic. The problem is I'm like four or five like seasons behind. It will kill my PlayStation's memory. I yeah. can't download that. Like, guys, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, the people that have Call of Duty only play Call of Duty and Madden. <laughs> Very, <laughs> very similar f- group. I know what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. It's Zach. Not Zack Snyder. No. <laughs> yes, we're actually personal friends with Zack Snyder. Yeah, he will have him on uh, our show next week, right? I'll get I'll get him to call in. And do you know anybody that can do a Zack Snyder impression? <laughs> get someone on Fiverr. Hi, I'm I'm Zack Snyder. <laughs> what the fuck is that? I don't know. A white guy impression? <laughs> Hi, I'm 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 Zack Snyder. My movies look good, but I guarantee you, you're not going to see them because you're going to be bored to sleep. <laughs> Shots fired. That's how, that's how I do feel, though, about Zack Snyder's movies. I, I think they look beautiful, but I don't care what's happening at it. We just need to do a roast podcast. We're going to, each week... I don't we're gonna, roast Zack Snyder. We're going to take a significant like type of nerdy... Uh, star icon, like it could be like an and actor. And just be mean to them. And just be mean to them. Oh, please. <laughs> that's not what, that's not what this podcast is no, about. It's about, I couldn't. it's mm. about being, it's about having fun and getting high and playing video games. Like Rick said from Rick and Morty, getting high and playing video games is the best. <laughs> but kids focus on your studies too, because you need to make it in this world. Screw school. <laughs> Lovely, um, this, lovely Shani here. There was this TikTok, and she's like, "Tell me, we're not living in living in a simulation. We go around and we collect coins through doing tasks, and then we use those coins to buy other things." The reason I put the mic in front of your face is not for you to move away from. It. No, you said I have to face the this, this thing the whole time. You don't have to face it exactly, but you like, just told in gen- me as long as you can see it. That's. <laughs> Are you two years old? What are you? You gave bad instructions. I didn't think I was giving it to like. What did they? What did they say in Beetleborgs? I Borgs? can't read your mind, Dylan. Oh, uh, what did they say in that Beetleborg show that got us laugh? Oh yeah, they said mentally. They, yeah, retarded. she called the guy. She said mentally challenged. She didn't say mentally retarded. I'm did pretty she? sure she said mentally retarded. Yeah, because we were like, whoa. Well, yeah, that to be on a kids show like today that would never get, yeah. and for good reasons. Mm-hmm. But, you know, back then that just took, it shocked us both that we had to burst out laughing yeah. just at the sure, like, wow, we, how much times have changed. Mm-hmm. Like, I know times change more than we think they do, but I feel like from, like, 1995 to 2015, the, um, what you could and couldn't get oh on my TV God. fucking went through Whew. the roof. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, people can make that argument with, like, the 50s and, like, other periods of time. But I feel like this one was just so compact. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Even the 2000s, like, really, I feel like a real 2005 to 2015, like, that... Mm -hmm. I don't want to say 2015, 2021. Let's just say 2010 to 2021. There we go. Anyway... Um, and I think too, you know, what's weird. I really judge my, like, I remember when I remember my year or like a year, like 2008, for example, I always in the back of my head, remember a wrestling moment from that (laughs) year. It's such a dorky thing, but I remember what, where I was in my life by what what was happening in wrestling. Yeah. It's a very nerdy, um, kind of sad (laughs) thing, but I like it. I'm such a wrestling fan, which brings me to... Our third section of tonight's podcast, where we're talking about wrestling, and I know Shannon, you're not a wrestling fan, but you are someone who likes to speculate and on drama. Oh yes. With WWE firing executives, office people, high level talent, low level talent, left and right, do you think that the WWE is going up for sale? Do you think Vince is gonna sell his share to NBC or anybody? You heard it first here, folks. Yes, he is. <laughs> Shannon, you predicted it right yes. there. Invest yes. now. Yes. <laughs> Actually, I'm curious if the WWE stock will take a dip when uh, NBC takes over. It would be interesting the NBC taking over. That might bring it up. But without Vince McMahon at the helm, who's been at the helm since the 80s. Mm-hmm. How is that going to look on the stock market? Because he's the he's been the king of the ring. 
for 40 years. Well, I'm wondering how many fans are going to stop watch watching wrestling because McMahon is no longer... I don't think that the fans are ever going to stop watching wrestling. I can see WWE's numbers dwindling. Mm-hmm. If they put somebody in there, in my opinion, who doesn't understand the product, they only understand, oh, it's like a TV show. No, it's different from that. Yeah. A wrestling audience is not like a live studio audience, unless the live studio audience can go, ah, fuck yourself, you know, boo you, you know, whatever they want. I would love if Donald Trump bought the wrestling just to see the crazy shit. I mean, we could go back to like the the attitude era where things were a little bit more risque a lot more scanned clad girls and a few more off-colored racial characters i'm sure <laughs> you know we could go back there donald trump would love that i mean i'm sure a good segment of the wrestling world would love that type of thing <laughs> oh you offended someone oh probably <laughs> hey you know i love the attitude era for a lot of their gimmicks and their characters hell the Godfather gimmick people could argue is racist and I couldn't disagree with them. What he, was it? The Godfather is a pimp. Oh. He comes to the ring with hoes yeah. and he pimps them out to you. You know, mm. he's like, I won't wrestle you. And he's a, and he, the Godfather is uh, portrayed by a black man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, you know what I mean? But he, the fans loved it. So in my opinion, in wrestling, like... If a gimmick is racist, the gimmick is racist regardless, but the gimmick is bad if the fans don't like it. You know what I mean? Yeah. If it's a gimmick that the fans can get behind, as long as it's not too problematic, and what I mean by problematic, there was this group uh, probably around 2006 to 2009 called Crime Time, and they were two black gentlemen who were from the hood, that's where they were built from, you know, Brooklyn, New York, as they said, and they would steal to win their matches you know they would they would hustle people in the street like that was their gimmick they were robbing people in their gimmicks i'm like they they were always portrayed as good guys because the fans loved them Mm -hmm. when in reality you could really play with that because that whole thing you could totally be bad guys too yeah but the fans loved it and i think that's what makes the difference if the fans don't enjoy it then it's a problem yeah i mean I guess that's with anything. Though. I'm really not saying anything groundbreaking here. But yeah, you think WWE is going to go up on, up for sale, eh? Yeah, well, oh my god, have you seen Vince McMahon? Yeah. He's dying. Vince he Mc... has a whole new fucking face. Why is nobody talking about that? That is not the same man. Vince McMahon's face got, like, it, it aged. Like, it aged, I feel from 2015 till now, it aged 80 years. But, like, he got the plastic surgery. And it looks... Horrible. Uh-huh. He looks like a scary Kendall. It looks like basically they took his skin and tried to tighten it. And yes. then it just And then he's not, like, up to date on his, like, shot. So it's just like... <sighs> but his, like, his cheekbones, you could tell he has, like, fillers in there. And his fucking eyebrows are, like, pointed up now. And he looks scary. I he wa- looks like a character from, like, a Dr. Seuss, like, live action movie. Like, I the shitty one. I if that's uh, something he's doing because he's insecure. Yes. Or if that's something that he's doing because it's, like, it'll portray a better image for my character on TV. But also, you know what? I'm going to call bullshit. The, I think the one will lead to the other. Either way. The, yeah. Those two are part of the same snake eating its own yeah. tail shit. Um, I think it is an insecurity thing because that is also, I don't know, very permanent. Definitely. But, I mean, like, he's he's probably done steroids and everything like There's that. There's so no he's way like, he's not. No like, going back okay, now. Okay, let's, let's just say this. We're just speculating. There is no confirmation or anything. We're not. We're not saying he's done steroids. I personally think, though, that a man of that age cannot get to that size without some help in the world. Yeah, and also just being around people that you know. It's it's like you can say that it doesn't happen. That's like saying in race horses that they don't drug their horses or whatever to run. Like you can say that all you want, but it doesn't change the fact that it actually does happen. Yeah, just because you, you don't have to prove it doesn't necessarily it, mean it didn't doesn't happen. help anybody because it's not helping those people that are struggling, that are getting hurt by that, that are dying from that. Do you think Vince McMahon has done more good in the world or more bad? For the wrestling world, probably... Well, I don't know, because people would be like, he's done so much good for the wrestling, he's got so many people, so much money, so many... He's brought more people into wrestling, and, you know, I want to add to that. He's created something that families can enjoy together. Yes. You know what I mean? And I don't think it's fair to fully answer that question because i don't know everything of course he's done or the things he's said done etc in private or undercover or whatever you know i get so it i guess just from a public perspective you could judge him 
I think Vince McMahon is is a very interesting person that I would love to see. And I think they're making a documentary about him, oh. like an A and E documentary. But it, you can't have WWE's paws in it. No, because what you want is you want to get their side of the story, mm-hmm. but you don't want them to control the story because then all of a sudden Vince is a saint. Yeah. But you don't want, in my opinion, you don't want a hit piece either because then it's just a bunch of bitter old dudes with broken hips going, "Ah, Vince is a bastard." So the people um, that are on the dark side of the ring. Yeah. They're not associated with wrestling at all, right? Because that's how they're able to tell those stories. But does it... They're not have... associated. They're not on a contract yeah. with anybody. But they can talk about their life story. Like, like they're not WWE employees, if that's what you're yeah. asking. No, um, but anybody to do with that show, like that makes that show or anything. They do nothing through the WWE, correct? Not to my knowledge, okay. no. Yeah. Um... It's made by Vice. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's a Vice. Oh, Vice, okay. L- Vice has a real... Um, like there is a wrestling passion in within that company because there are multiple documentaries yeah. about it, and I love it mm-hmm. because they're not they're not showing the WWE. They're talking about pieces of broken people or like those crazy death matches or even like those like I know this is a, a Vice documentary, but like a style of documentary like the David Arquette one where he's um. Showing him, you know, resurging oh, back into yeah. wrestling. Which, if you haven't seen that already, and you like wrestling and documentaries, give it a watch. It's very interesting. It really makes you feel for David Arquette, because the wrestling community hates that man. I know. It's like, I, I literally don't know this man at all. And I watched the, um, like, part of the documentary. I didn't watch it. I wasn't fully paying attention. But I was like, it was so mean to him. Yeah. He has a kid oh. and a wife that loves him. Re- as much as I am a wrestling fan, I sometimes hate to call myself a wrestling fan because some wrestling fans are shit. It's like Juggalos. They, they rival Star Wars in terms oh, no. of toxic fandom. Like, I was telling you, like, New Jack passed away recently. Yeah. Right? And Come some fans... Burping whore. <laughs> that, that should be on his gravestone. Oh. That's from a shoot interview, guys. If you haven't seen it, look it up. It's interesting. Um, but I think it was he was playing the hoe bag. That's what it was. Um, but wrestling fans crashed... His funeral during a pandemic, uninvited, didn't know the man, and apparently they gave the family a really hard time about it. Like they felt entitled to be there. Fuck off. Yeah, exactly. Fuck right off. What is, what is the what's not connected in your brain that makes you go, that's not a good idea? Yeah. Or that's a good idea. You know what I'm trying mm-hmm. to say. But I don't know. Some like moments like that. I'm just like Jesus Christ. And I think most sane wrestling fans like that. I think you can't read comments on anything wrestling though because it's just a constant. It's a lot of whinging. It's kind of like when you see certain posts on Facebook, and you're like, oh, I know exactly the type of people that are commenting on this and what they're saying. So I'm not even gonna open it. Mm-hmm. You're like, I, it's just gonna make me angry. Why, what's the point of seeing that? I find it interesting because I haven't quite worked out if these guys are fucking around or playing along or if they truly believe. That's an interesting thing with wrestling is when someone comments on like a Facebook video, let's just say it's a video of John Cena getting hit in the face, you know what I mean? And somebody's like, I hope John Cena's okay, you know, that bastard shouldn't have hurt him that way, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And I'm always just like, I'm, I'm like, because I'm 90% sure they're just playing along with, like, the whole thing. But I don't get the people that would do that. Like, almost role-playing in a comment, you know what I mean? Like, you're almost role-playing Are as part of... Are there people that do that? I don't know if that's oh. what it is, though. Maybe I'm just speculating, because I'm like, I don't want to be one of those people, because I hate, hate this as a wrestling fan. I think every wrestling fan does. You get this all the time. You know, it's fake, right? <laughs> and it's always asked by the stupidest person. And I almost always love hockey or some football, some basic sport that's boring. <laughs> Do you no offense of anybody. A sport? No, wrestling is not a sport. Wrestling is a... To me, wrestling is a physical performance mm-hmm. that has... That takes athleticism and pain tolerance. They're not good actors, most of them. But they do what they do best. Mm-hmm. They can tell a story that I think is much more interesting than what you could get out of a fight. Because a fight, like a boxing fight or an MMA fight, a lot of it's pretty dull. Very few fights are non-stop, tell a story through the whole thing. Fights are better in highlights. Mm -hmm. Wrestling, when it's good, you can sit down and put a 60-minute match on, and people, you don't even have to say anything on the mic with them. You just have to watch them, and people will sit there and go, wow, Mm -hmm. this is storytelling. 
and people look down on it still like the same. I, I was saying this to um, a coworker. I'm going to go off on a little tangent here. It's kind of like video, or not video games. Um, wrestling is seen by people who like, it's just trash. They're the same people who say video games aren't art. Oh. <laughs> Those are the people who obviously have not done research yeah. into certain things. You can say you don't like something, but to dismiss it as an art form in general, you're pretentious yes. and you're an asshole. Yes. Because, like, we were saying, like, we had uh, one of our f- instructors in college, with, she didn't have a problem with video games, but I could tell that she th- spoke about it as if it were beneath her. Yeah, like, it wasn't she was an art like, form. Uh, was, it, was it one of us that had, or was it somebody else that had a screenshot on their PowerPoint and it was from a video game? I don't remember. Anyways, somebody had a screenshot from a video game, it was up on the PowerPoint, and she's like, oh, I found it interesting that you guys chose from a a video game, and then she went on, like, a a tangent about it, but she was kind of like, yeah, you don't really, like, see that much, and you can find inspiration from other things, or I don't know, it was kind of weird. Well, uh, listen, video game, I'm not going to engage with somebody who would speak that way. Yeah. Because I know where your opinions, where, where your mind is set. Which is fine. You don't have to appreciate things, but don't I don't don't make such a douche comment that mm-hmm. way. It's kind of like the people that are like, um, anime is like not good art or something like that. It's like that's subjective. It's it's also like when everybody says all cartoons are for kids. Yeah. Oh, I hate that. And I not honestly, seen anything. <laughs> I honestly like. There's so much animation that gets that doesn't get the. Uh, I think the views or the recognition that it deserves because it's animation. Yes. I think that's a very narrow minded thing for people to have. And I don't like it. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not offended by it, but it's more just like, I really think people are shorting themselves on experience with like, I, I like I've said, if you listen to this podcast before, Shannon, I thank you for introducing me to death. Note. <laughs> it's one of my favorite shows. Do you want to know something funny that I found out from Tumblr? Mm. Mind you, I don't know if this is true, but it sounds like it would be true. Okay. So, All the anime... I stopped watching anime for, like, a little bit. Um, But all the anime that I personally know has been from, like, the 2000... Early 2010s, but then backwards onwards. Kind of like that 2000 to early 2010 era. Okay. And I see all these animes and all these characters and stuff online. I'm like, who the fuck is that? What is this show? What is everyone going on about? And I'm so confused. And then I seen this TikTok. So apparently from like 2010 to now, half the anime has been made within like that 10 year time span. Oh yeah? It's doubled its production basically within 10 years. It was crazy. If... See, technology, though, people getting being able to push it out faster, right? Yeah, but I'm like, why is it just because of the boom, or is it because now they use some, like, 3D stuff to make it go faster, and it's cheaper than doing other things, or... I think a lot... I think more people are... At least more adults are starting to turn towards... Just, not yes. anime in general, but animation in yes. general. Yes, yeah. Um, and speaking, I've got... I don't know if anybody's have seen this, but I want to give this shout-out to Vizipop. Check out Hell of a Boss on YouTube, and Has Been Hotel by them. She Mm -hmm. does great work. Yes. Her style is great. Her writing is witty. Her voice actors are great. It's got the guy from Invader Zim. Yeah. Her character work is great. You can have... She blends comedy and seriousness and musical. Check Vizzy Pop out. Yes. (laughs) Like, that's kind of um, what I like seeing more and more in... Art is not necessarily being confined to one genre, but taking things from other things and creating something new. Yeah. Like, you know, Hell of a Boss, for example, it's for the most part been this raunchy comedy between like these sexually frustrated demons and like they're making fourth wall jokes. And then they introduce this one character in one episode who is menacing <laughs> and downright scary and it's just like when you see him just the way she in those brief seconds because before they were all having a little bit of fun and then it's like he comes in. And it's like, it just changes the mood. Like, the way they shoot it, the way it's written, it's great. Um, so, yeah, Vizzy, Vizzy Pop on YouTube. Check her work out. Yeah, so it's... it's I, it, I was trying to figure out the first couple of episodes. I'm like, what the fuck is this title? So I think what it's supposed to be is it's hell of a boss. Like, oh, I have a hell of a boss. Like, yeah. it's fucking crazy. But I couldn't figure it out. So it's hell... And then it's U V A boss. 
Hell of a... Hell of a boss. You couldn't... You slow, Shannon? No. You slow. It was fucking hard. I'll take that. I'll take that. Yeah, no, really good stuff. Um, well, we're probably going to be winding down here in a few minutes. Is there anything else that you've been looking forward to or any new releases? I mean, there's not really much for new releases other than what comes on on Netflix. I'm pissed. What? <laughs> my fucking spirit movie. Okay, so my spirit movie, which I'm not even happy to see. I'm just fucking watching it trash on it because they're fucking mean and they fucking ruined the first movie anyways <laughs> you mean i ruined the first movie by saying matt damon no. was in it you did not realize it was matt damon no okay so the first movie is actually a really good movie and it has like a lot matt of matt like, damon stuff. and it has like native americans and they like talk about it and it's like realistically set like in that well it's pretty realistically <laughs> set in that time like the horses fucking talk but they're not is like talking DreamWorks to or disney dreamworks okay Anyways, so it was really good and actually had, like, um, cultural stuff and stuff. <laughs> I don't think there's any, like, Native American or any talk of that at all in this movie. And I watched, like, the TV series, the new animated one, and there's nothing. I think maybe there was one character that was there, like, once. But, like, the main character, she is dark-skinned. But I think she's Spanish? I don't actually remember what she is. Okay. But like, but like, what the fuck? You guys complete the whole ho the horse was supposed to represent the um basically like the wild and the American way before it was like the wild west. Yeah, is what you're it's supposed to, to represent like the wild west and freedom and all this stuff because an eagle falls them around. It, there's like deep symbolism, and then they just said, "Fuck you, we want your money." <laughs> And they made this new movie. <laughs> Isn't that what all companies eventually I know, do? All it things. It pisses me off. Also, you people on TikTok that find this horse attractive, you need to fucking chill. That's fucking gross. <laughs> There's so Don't many people. Don't be kink shaming, especially during Pride. <laughs> fucking hell over oh my here. God. I keep seeing them like, stop giving me these videos. <laughs> what are you looking up to get those videos, Shane? Horse. Shan? Horse videos. Oh, and then bet you there's some horse videos, all right. No, no judgment, though. Oh no judgment. Oh, my God, no. <laughs> YouTube used to be a wild time. Back in, like, 2007 to, like, 2010, YouTube. there was no fucking filter. Here, here's, um, a, YouTube to me is, like, everything now, especially anything on the trending page, it's all so clean. Oh, my God. It's all so, it feels so manufactured in a way. Yeah. It doesn't feel like there's, that's why it's, like, there's stuff that Hollywood puts on the internet, and then there's the internet. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it just, you can tell the difference. One feels polished and produced, and the other stuff just feels real. Yeah. You know what I mean? As real as it can. And yeah. eventually, I think eventually everything on the internet that eventually gets big falls into that mm -hmm. trap because they get the money for it. Money. Money. Back to the meme, circling back to the meme of Mr. Krabs. Yeah. yeah Why'd like you do it? Money. Money. <laughs> I still love that he's voiced by um, Mr. Hank. Krabs. Oh, Hank, yeah. Yes, we love Hank for some reason. I uh, yeah, it's a very, <laughs> it's very weird he's that like we both mascot. enjoy. Th and he's just kind of like, oh, there's Hank. It's like leave Hank alone. <laughs> then we both kind of feel bad for Hank. I know, when he fucking kills himself. He didn't kill himself in my playthrough. I know, he didn't kill himself in my playthrough, but he can. And when I found that out, I was like, no! We're talking about Detroit Become Human, everybody. Yes. Yeah, if you're wondering what it Which is. Which, I am still upset. It should be called Detroit Becoming Human. I don't get why it's called Detroit. Why didn't it just be called Become Human? I know. They like, what like, does the city really nothing. impact? <laughs> is it because it's the Motor City? Oh, yeah. Maybe that's why. <laughs> it, it's not clear. It's not really put there. And it's something I just pulled out of my ass. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't think they're that deep, you know. I, I I really, I enjoyed the game, but somebody made a great point. They're like, yeah, they're trying to really talk about, like, slavery using these um, things that aren't humans. And, you know, like, the whole argument is like, oh, well, that's the argument. It's like, yeah, but they're actually not humans. They're robots. Like, I don't feel bad for a robot. <laughs> I uh, well, was... it's like, well, I think... Connor, like, proved the point, if you play it a certain way, that it's, like, no, they have actually developed to become, like, soul things or whatever. Like, mm. I, I don't know. Is Vision a robot? That's what I was confused by. I think he is, and he just, he has, like, the soul time fucking stone or something, and that's what makes him human-ish. Mm. 
Well, uh, that's a topic I think for another time because we'll get we, you know we should do a podcast maybe on One Division sometime because that was a good show. Yeah, it's pizza time. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna get some pizza because we have a little bit of stoned uh, in us, as you can tell by that stupid comment I just made. So, Shannon, I want to thank you for joining us back on another episode of the podcast. And everybody, if you like this podcast, please uh, subscribe to us, follow us, so we can get the latest episode out. And until next time, puff on that.